how's it going? I'm home. Hey, yeah, I'm in here. Oh, okay. How are you doing? Pretty good. Nice. Where are you coming from? I've just been out and about doing some shopping. I was uh, here in the Mission, and then I went to Hate Street, just going to some secondhand stores. Oh, okay. One of my favorite things to do. Yeah, cool. So who are you just getting off the phone with? Oh, I was speaking to my grandmother. How's she doing? Yeah, she's doing okay. She was actually feeling under the weather last week, but uh, now she's all right. Oh, did she just have a cold or something? Yeah, she said that there was something going around. Uh, my aunt had it, and my niece had it, so she might have caught it from one of them. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. You know, speaking with my grandmother on the phone, sometimes I feel like I'm a little kid again. I get, yeah, like, transported that? back to the time when we used to live close together and... Uh, you know, and I was a kid. I mean, my grandparents, when I was growing up, they lived just like a stone's throw away from us. Maybe like, I don't know, uh, two miles or something. So we wow. used to see them all the time. Yeah. yeah. It was awesome. I mean, you know, when you're a kid, one of your favorite things is to see your grandparents. Yeah. You know, it's like you get to escape the discipline of your parents for a little bit. Right. And, you know, your grandparents, they'll always shower you with attention and... You know, my grandmother would always, you know, make us some sweets and, you know, and she was just always like, uh, always really uh, uh, happy to see us, you know? Uh huh. Yeah, I never had the luxury of even uh, being around one set of grandparents. My dad's parents died before I was born, so I never even met them. And then my uh, mom's parents. We lived close to them, but not as close as, as you to your grandparents. I'd say it was like a 20 to 30 minute drive, and that was only until I was eight, because then we moved away from Michigan to Georgia, so then it would be seeing them once a year. Yeah, I mean, my brothers and I were really fortunate to have both sets of grandparents around. Yeah, you uh, were. And, uh, I mean, my my father's parents moved down to Florida when we were like eight years old and you know that that was a bummer for us at the time uh, but at least my mom's parents lived around us you know until we were teenagers and mm -hmm. we moved to Pennsylvania mm -hmm. but it's uncommon these days I mean the generations before us always had their family right near them right I, I mean I hear these stories from my grandmother she says that her entire family lived in like one you know on one block and that wasn't uncommon I mean a lot of the times they would uh, the whole family would live in the same house usually people didn't leave until they got married and even if they did leave and get married they lived just down the block well speaking of the same block that that uh, made me think of my brother my younger brother when he was in high school dated this girl and her whole family lived on the same street and I could remember thinking how strange that was yeah, I mean, now it is, but yeah. back then it wasn't at all. Yeah, right. Yeah. Oh, when I was talking to my grandmother, as we do a lot of the times, we, I was reminiscing with her about when I was younger and, you know, um, you know, we not only did we live very close to my grandparents, we all went to the same church. So, you know, wow. every Sunday afternoon, we'd see them at church and we'd sit near them and... uh then after church was over, I'd always like beg my parents to let us go over to my grandparents' house and, you know, we'd go over there and eat dinner and I'd watch baseball games with my grandfather, so that was always a lot of fun, you know. Uh -huh. It was just, you know, just spending time with them, you know. Yeah. We just had was a it, great time. Was it like a big Sunday dinner? Oh, yeah, and my grandmother would cook a huge meal and my grandmother was an amazing cook. She'd always cook like some amazing Italian dinner, and mm. you know we just loved going over there for that reason as well. Oh, that's great! Hey, you know I ran into John today, and he's going to actually be doing some traveling in Europe. He's uh, he says he's going to spend a lot of time in Prague. Oh, Prague's awesome! Uh, did I tell you I lived there? No, get out of here! You never told me that. Yeah, I lived in Prague about 15 years ago. Oh, whoa! Dude, what, what were you doing there? Well, I was traveling. I didn't actually know that I would end up in Prague. I was just going to do whatever came along. Wait, where'd you but start out traveling? I got a one-way ticket to Amsterdam. 
<laughs> oh, nice. And one of the only people that I knew in Europe was this chick that I used to go out with. So uh, I figured I'd look her up. I knew she had another boyfriend at that point, but she said she could get me a place to stay, and she was in Prague. So I figured I'd go there for a few weeks and see how it went. She was from Prague, or no? She was American, but she was over there teaching English. Oh, nice, nice. Yeah. So wait, how long did you spend in Amsterdam? I only spent about four days in Amsterdam before I got kind of sick of it. So you were just going, th you were just basically like uh, traveling through. Yeah, and then I started hitching. Oh, nice. Nice. And uh, kind of hooked up with some English chicks and just kind of spent a little bit of time with them on the road and then eventually ended up uh, on a train late at night and uh, didn't have any money but pretended I didn't understand what anyone was saying and ended up in Prague. Wait, when you first took off um, from the U.S., were you actually traveling alone? Totally by myself. <laughs> oh, sweet. Yep. Nice. And it's you... funny looking back. I didn't have anything with me, you know? Yeah, you could just, like, basically uh, take off on a whim. I had, like, one pair of shoes and no health insurance, and I was just uh, living large. <laughs> That's nice. And you know what? Now you would probably look back and think that you were totally broke, and uh, that now that you have kids, that would be a difficult, <laughs> a very difficult thing to think of. If I had to be responsible for them, it would be difficult, but, you know, I... Uh... I was only responsible for me, and I kind of I was I was in the mood to uh, to feel anonymous. I wanted to go where no one recognized me. Yeah, no, that sounds great. So you, I, that's great that you just travel alone. A lot of people uh, are not into doing that, you know. Yeah, well, it's a big deal. Yeah, you got to kind of put are... yourself out there and just see what happens, you know. Yeah, exactly. I actually I've never traveled alone, but uh, I, I'm sure I could do it, you know, because. Uh, I'm. I feel like I'm pretty good at meeting people. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you, sometimes it's fun to meet people, and other times it's fun to just truly be on your own. And you know, you get into a situation where you where you realize that nobody knows where you are, and <laughs> yeah. you just have this total sense of uh, freedom. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah, I can only imagine. So yeah. You took the train from Amsterdam to uh, to Prague. No, I took the train to somewhere in Germany, and then I started thumbing on the side of the road. Oh, how long did you stay in Germany? Uh, like two days. Oh, that wasn't long at all. Yeah, just long enough for a couple of weird people to meet me and uh, help me out and take me to different places. So they actually picked you up? Yeah, at one point I decided that I didn't really care what direction the car was going as long as it was warm and dry I was getting in. Wait, did were you actually like... Uh... Did you believe that you were headed to Prague at that point, or were you just yeah, heading I was wherever? Little, no, I was headed to Prague, but I didn't really care if it took me a while or what. Oh, that's cool. What'd so I just kind of went with the flow of what was happening. Yeah, what would you think of Germany while you were there? Because I'd never been there. Kind of weird. Either. Kind of weird. Uh, you know, being, uh, being a Jew... Uh, I was kind of aware of the history. Yeah, I'm sure that that's something that is pretty hard to forget. Yeah, although, you know, interestingly, the only person I met in Europe who was a deadhead was in Germany. Oh, really? Yeah, and he was, like, so happy that I was into the dead when he met me, and I gave him one tape that I had, and he was just ecstatic because was... they weren't able to get tapes like we were at that point. Oh, so he was actually German? Yeah. <laughs> That's great. Because this was before computers. Yeah, well, if you think about it, the dead Not played before. there in uh, 81. Yeah. And, yeah, he, uh, he knew about them. He knew what was up, but he was like, you know, yeah, I could use some music. And he had a <laughs> dead shirt on. He showed me. It was funny. <laughs> Wait, he, he was actually wearing a Grateful Dead shirt when you mm -hmm. met him? <laughs> it was like great. underneath a sweatshirt. He's like, no, really? He pulls over. He lifts up the sweatshirt. He's like, look. It was like an old tie-dye. Were you wearing one also? No. Oh, so how did he know? Uh, I just started talking about it, and I had bootlegs with me. Oh, that's great.